myself, Rachel Patterson, and Pete Roquet. Good morning. As always, we have awesome guests for you. Um, today doesn't disappoint either. Another one of my favorites, someone who I know as well. Um, so we're going to get right to it. We'll get into his origin story and a little bit of the good stuff. Um, but I get the pleasure and honor of introducing everyone to our special guest today, who is Mr. Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas is the Colorado Regional Manager and Director of Education for Shums Coda. Good morning, Mr. Thomas. Good morning, Rachel and Pete. How are you guys today? Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Enjoy it. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll let Pete talk here in a second, but like I said, you, you're you one of my favorites, so I get to, to talk for a few minutes. So uh, good morning again, and thank you for being here with us. Sure. Um, so excited for everyone to meet you and know you and see you. I know you're already on a million different platforms and do so many things within our industry. So most folks already know you, but uh, we get a chance to learn a little bit more, kind of hear where you've been, where you're going, all the good stuff. So when we were offline just a few minutes ago, we had talked a little bit about um, you know, Shum's Coda and the meaning behind that kind of stuff and or that kind of stuff, excuse me, that that saying um, that those words. So I'd kind of like to touch on that a little bit um, after Pete says hello. So I, I, I get the pleasure of always running into folks and getting to meet new people. So I got to meet Steve. I think I met you at Region 3, maybe a couple of years back. And you know, so at that time, I think you were the Colorado Code Consultant, and you know, and it's 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 crazy because you see, your, I always see you in the brochures. I'm like, hey, that class looks good, you know. So, <laughs> so, so you're a, um, a normal, a regular at a lot of these educations, Educode, ICC, um, you know, the different regional trainings. I know you have a couple of classes coming up, and we'll talk about those a little bit. But yeah, you you are, you know, you've been in the industry for for some time. You wrote a book. And we'll talk about your book too. And so I'm just excited to hear about you and all your adventures. So great. Cool. Look forward to it. So yeah, tell us a little bit about you know where you came from, how you got involved in code. Pete and I joke all the time with all of our guests about no one grows up wanting to be a building official or a code enforcement officer. So we always like to hear, you know, where you came from. Cool. So um I uh I started actually. I guess the, 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 the very beginning was in uh, high school, uh, my junior and senior year, I took building trades um, at the vocational school. You know, I was one of those top level students that, that went to vocational school, primarily because I knew my parents couldn't afford to send me to college and I wanted to have a career when I got out of high school. So I spent two years in building trades and we actually built um, uh, homes and sold them actual homes and and those kind of things as high school students so you can imagine what that was like to to build a build homes as a high school student there's more nails in that home those homes <laughs> um, than than any other home around but anyway so uh, when i got out of uh, high school i went and started becoming a carpenter you know a framer and uh, did that for a little bit and found out that that probably didn't work so well uh, because I didn't get paid a couple of times. And I went, uh, I'm getting married, going to have some kids. This isn't going to work. Um, so I decided to uh, go back into working retail for a little bit and go back to school. I wasn't planning on going to um, to uh, to college, but I went, okay, maybe I can do something. So I went to community college, took uh, civil engineering technology, sitting in a, in a, uh, a class, and the, and the instructor said, so what do you do? And I said, well, I'm working retail. And they said, you need to work in the area that you were studying. The best advice I ever got. And I tell people that all the time. If you're going to college, go work in the area. You'll find out really quick if this is really the career that you want. So I uh, got a job working for a testing lab, testing concrete and soils and asphalt and those kind of things. And uh, loved concrete around and did that for a while. And uh, the guy that owned the testing company a code consulting firm similar to Shum's Code. And I went to him and I said, I want to be a building. Easier than lugging concrete around to test concrete. So he tried it out, gave me some opportunities. He got me involved in IC, ICBO at that time um, and, uh, and, and gave me the training and got me certifications and those kind of things. Um, and so from there, um, 
Uh, we had a we were serving a jurisdiction called the city of Glendale, Colorado, and uh, they got sideways with my boss and terminated our contract. And I went to the uh, city manager and said, "Hey, I want to be your building official. I've been doing inspections for the city for a couple of years." He says, "Well, you're kind of young." And I said, "Well, I'm 23. Come on." And uh, he said, "Okay. Well, what do you got?" let's talk about it. And I said, well, why don't we hire another code consultant that can mentor me to become a building official? And so they hired Pete Tyree, who was a past president of ICBO and, and a uh, building official for um, Pikes Peak Regional Building Department in Colorado Springs. Some people may know Dave Tyree. Uh, Dave is Pete's son and like a brother to me. And so after that, I... Um, uh, worked for Glendale for 18 years and decided then uh, to start my own code consulting firm with Colorado Code Consulting in uh, 1999 and had that company for 21 years and sold it and merged with Shumscoda in 2020. So it's a long, wonderful career. Love what I do. You know, and, and so Steve, it's interesting that, you know, when we talk about technical trade, it, it doesn't really exist anymore. You know, and, and it's coming back. I mean, ICC is doing a good job on their 2.0 program that they're working on. But, you know, like growing up, I, I had auto mechanics class and that isn't even offered anymore. Home right. economics and these vocational schools. So, I mean, kudos to to the state of Colorado for offering that to you guys. You know, yeah. it's a, you know, and, and right now I know we had an offline discussion about my son being in a construction management and you know it's it's one of those things where he's learning how to write you know read read plans read the code books do this so yeah it's a it's a good thing and you know i encourage any young person to really get into you know to learning that stuff because it's important there's a real need for building officials building inspectors code enforcement officers in our industry because you know there's a lot of folks getting up in that age that you know they're 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 leaving the industry and you know we're stuck with this void you know, you get stuck with the with, with the Rachel's and pizza of the world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not too bad. We're trying out there, aren't we, Pete, with our children's stuff too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think you know, I I tell people a lot that you know, I, I refereed soccer for fifteen years and coach soccer for eighteen years, and I I like to compare what we do to to sports refereeing and sports sports officiating and understanding the game. Right. You know, you watch a football game that could call holding on every call, but they don't because the referees understand the game and that it doesn't affect the play. And I think it's the same thing in what we do. We need to understand what the game is. How does the building go together? Um, how are buildings, you know, organized and those kind of things. So having that additional education and training on on construction, I think, really helps folks in our industry. And, and, you know, um, you wrote a book called The uh, Building Essentials. And um, it, it was, uh, you know, in reading uh, kind of a snippet of the book, it's um, you did it to kind of make it a little bit more palatable for the reader. You know, right. and I think that's very important because, you know, when you there's always strategy in what we do, you know, and like it, it's like you said, you have to know the game because every jurisdiction is different. You have the different, you know, the different um different needs of the community. Some cities don't want to grow. They, you know, some cities don't want extra, you know, they don't want that Walmart coming into their town or, you know, whatever it might be. And you have to know that there's a bigger impact in what we do. And, and I think folks sometimes forget that they get tied up like, well, your, your nails are like 11 and a half inches away from each other, you know, and <laughs> instead of saying, Hey, you know what, this thing just needs not to fall over, you know? So, and, 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 we get stuck in that rut. So, you know, so can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up, why you wrote the book and, you know, how you ended up, uh, you know, what's the thought process behind, you know, what, what inspired you to do that? Well, first of all, I'm up to six books now. Uh, oh. The Building Code Essentials is uh, first edition was the 2012, based on the 2012 and the 2020 edition just came out. So uh, it should be available on ICC and, and it, it's, it's a book that's kind of an introductory book to the building code. So the people that don't have not worked in the building code before, maybe an architect that's just out of school, 
wants a little more information or a new, somebody wants to be a building inspector or a um, plans examiner or permit tech that wants to kind of understand the basics of the code. It started out building code basics was the first one. Um, and so um, it, it, to be honest with you, it was ICC that had the, <laughs> came to me and said, hey, we think you could write a book for us. And I'm, you know, I've known a lot of folks, Doug Thornburg and Hamid Nadiri and, and a lot of guys that are involved in the development of products at ICC. And they said, Hey, would you, would you put this book together? And I went, Oh, I don't know. You know, never written a book. And, and I do have advice for people. If, if, if you ever want to write a book on the building code, remember you will not make any money. <laughs> on the building code, but it was fun. I have, I really enjoyed it. We updated every code cycle. Uh, like I said, the 21 code came out, and then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, ICC came to me again and said, "Hey, you seem to be the cannabis code guy. Um, would you write a book on cannabis?" And so I put a book called "Applying the Codes to Cannabis Facilities" together that turned out to be much more popular than I thought it was going to. At first I went, oh, nobody's going to buy a book on cannabis. And it's, it's grown into me teaching probably 15 to 20 classes on cannabis a year. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun writing a book. It's a lot of work um, uh, to do that. So, but that's a whole idea of what we tried to do with the, with the, the essentials series is try to, create some basic understandings of the code. Now, Colorado was one of the first states to, to actually legalize cannabis. And, yep. you know, and, and it's interesting because when, when California started legalizing cannabis, we actually went to Colorado to talk to their code, you know, their code association. And, you know, we, we didn't really talk, we talked about like what the uh, black market industry was doing to the housing market. You know, we, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. You had a lot of cases of mold. You had, a, you know, all this uh, crazy electrical wiring that became fire hazardous. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of components when when uh, when it comes to cannabis. So what kind of got you really into the whole cannabis? Uh, you know, one day you just didn't become the cannabis guru. You know, I mean, it kind of <laughs> it, it kind of morphed. So, well, it started out with the Colorado chapter of ICC. Um and uh, they had had a, a chapter meeting scheduled to uh, discuss cannabis and the speakers that they had um, canceled on them like three days before the chapter meeting. And so the education director called me and or the program director called me and said, hey, is there any way you put a half day class on cannabis on marijuana at that time? You know, you gotta use the politically correct now because we use hemp as well, but I, could you yeah. do a marijuana class? And I went, I could probably put something together, you know, um, when do you need it? And they went Friday. And so I went, well, let me see what I can do. So um, I went ahead and put a half day class together and, and talked about how I looked at, at, at these kind of facilities, grow facilities, did some research, you know, on, on the, the big time research platform called Google um, to find out what happens in these facilities, what are the issues, and then just kind of applied it to the code. And, you know, after that, somebody else said, hey, I, ICC called and said, hey, I understand you might have a class on that. And so I did a class in at the 2015 annual business meeting. And I still get phone calls from people that search cannabis in the codes and they find that handout and call me and ask me questions. And it's like, okay, understand that was done in like 2015. Um, Lots of things have changed. I've learned a lot of things over those years. And so now it's turned into, like I said, the book and full day classes on, on cannabis. And my big point in my classes is forget it's cannabis. Yeah, It's a plant. If I'm going to grow tomatoes in a building, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah. From a code enforcement standpoint, through illegal facilities, big problems, right? Um, you've got potential mold. You've got you know CO2, all kinds of things like that. Yeah, and and people forget they get into the extraction and the honey oil and all that, all that other crazy stuff that you know we see out there, and the normal person doesn't see. All they see is like, hey, cannabis is legal. Hey, you know, I'm gonna go to the local cannabis store and just buy it, but they don't see the process, the dangers it creates for a potential neighborhood. So I right. think that's important to like you know really kind of touch base on. So, so the other the other thing um, that 
you know, can you tell us a little bit about what what your um, what classes you're working on right now? Oh my gosh, you name it, I'm putting them on. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of update classes. We're doing, you know, with the 2021 codes coming out, we're doing a lot of update classes. Um, I just, Rachel was there. I just did a class a month, couple of months ago, I guess now it's been on um, intermodal shipping containers. There's some new provisions in the residential code and the uh, building code regarding building buildings out of shipping containers. So, um, Working on a little of that, trying to come up with some new ideas, updating classes to the 2021 code. You know, we're getting ready for the EDUCODE next year um, and uh, the Colorado Institute. And trying to, we're, we're thinking of trying to put together a more of a hands-on plan review class instead of just basically an overview of the code going, okay, let's get some plans, let's sit down and review the plans. How, how do you physically do the review? And so, um, it's it's uh it's a great great way to um, come up with some new ideas. But yeah, we've got probably hundreds of different classes that Jumps Code offers in all that, areas of the code now. That's awesome. So when when did you really discover that you were you know you were meant for educating versus you know just kind of you know uh, doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think. I don't know if I should admit this, but anyway, I think it probably started when I was a kid and uh, I was uh, a Boy Scout and uh, a member of the Order of the Arrow and actually was part of the Indian dance team. So I had a full regalia and uh, uh, went to powwows and, and, you know, Native American type dancing and those kind of things. So I, I was a performer when I was a kid. And once I got into codes and the Colorado chapter started the Educational Institute 30 uh, or five years ago, something like that, um, I mentioned that, hey, I wouldn't mind teaching a class. And so they said, OK, what do you want to teach? And I went, um, how about I teach roofing, uh, believe it or not, because I've kind of become a roofing guy back then. And so I started teaching at the Colorado Institute, and did one day and then I did a couple days and then I was doing a full week and then when I left Glendale I started saying okay I'm going to start doing this and the word got out and and people started calling and saying hey will you come here to teach will you come there to teach so I I, I have to you know give uh, the Colorado chapter credit for getting me involved in the whole education thing I always tell people if it's if it wasn't for the chapter I, I would not be where I'm at and I tell people all the time get involved with your local chapters it's a it's great groups to be involved with no I I that because rachel's on hey rachel <laughs> can you hear so, can you hear it? i can't hear anything that steve is saying so i'm trying to find a nice polite way to interject and just ask if anyone can hear me i can hear you pete but not a single thing that um steve is saying so I, right. I can hear you we can hear you yeah i can so, hear you too. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I've gotten out of the program a couple of times and gotten back in, but I still can't hear Steve, who is obviously the star of our show today. Um, so I'm going to try one more time, everybody. So I apologize about me going on and off camera. Um, I do want to say I absolutely agree with Miss Yolanda. Um, enjoying watching one of Steve's classes is, is quite special. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. I am going to try one more time to get on and off, and we'll go from there. So Rachel, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. I changed my microphone again. Pete, can you hear me? Okay. All right. I can so, hear you. We'll oh my back. goodness. All We're right, back in business, business, everyone. I apologize about that. Thank you. We've been in business, Rachel. <laughs> I'm back in business. We'll put it that way. I'm back in business. So, you know, and for those that, um, you know, kind of live that life of teaching around, it takes a toll on you. Like it really does. There's a lot of traveling involved, and but you do the benefits of meeting all these great people across the United States. I mean, there's really no other feeling that you know that uh, you can't really describe it because you get to meet so many industry leaders and innovators and educators, and you know it's it, it's awesome, you know. And I think we all met. Look, you guys are in Colorado. I'm in California. How does this happen? You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, so, right. Pete, have we, have we touched on the fact that uh, Mr. Thomas took the 2018 ICC Educator of the Year Award? Have we touched we on that? 
We did not touch on that. So we're still on education. So obviously that's a huge um, undertaking and an incredible honor. But it, you were with Colorado Co Cold Cons Code Consulting when you received that um, award, right? That's correct. Yeah, it was actually given to the company. It wasn't just given it to me. Awesome. So it's a huge awesome. Honor to, to share that with the folks of the firm, and you know, it's not just an individual. It, it kind of goes with the way I ran the company. Is it's all we're all together. It's not just me. So, what does it take to earn an award like that, Steve? Um. Good question. Somebody to nominate you and the committee to say yes. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I feel very honored to to um, have the award and and you know share it with a lot of really great um, instructors across the country. Doug Thornburg, um, you know, Terrell Stripling. Uh, it was based on, like I said, my mentor earlier, Brent Snyder. Uh, is kind of where it originated, and so it's. Uh, it's great to share that with the, a lot of those folks that I've looked up to myself as, as uh, inspectors. That's awesome. You know, I, I think that goes down to show, you know, ultimately what you're trying to do is bring that awareness as well to the younger generations. And I think you're proving it every day and showing it just um, by everything that you do. That's our job is to help people understand the code, whether I'm doing a class or whether I'm doing an inspector or plan review, I look at it. It's all education. I'm always educating, whether it's out in the field on a set of plans um, or in a classroom. So, but yeah, right. traveling's a pain. I hate the traveling, but I, I love the teaching. Uh, right. People, I mean, what I learn, I, you know, it's amazing how many different ways things are built across the country. Yeah. You know, Steve, I'm not sure if you guys touched on this and I do apologize if we uh, talk about anything twice. But, you know, when you talk about teaching, um, something that we talked about offline is really making that teaching palatable, as Pete says, um, and receiving that information. And so, you know, ultimately what I want to touch on is that common sense element, that humanity element that we we talked about earlier. Um, you know, I think anyone who's gone through any of your classes or just been in your presence knows that you bring that element of excellent knowledge for your profession, but you also bring, you know, a level of customer service kindness. Um, and then that, that day old common sense that if common sense were common, everyone would have it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I always have been a customer service kind of guy. I, I, you know, I, I could, you know, when I was serving as a code official, I would tell a de developer or, or an architect that, you know, first of all, you got to understand my priority is life safety. I mean, that's my job, but I'll do everything I can to help you get your project done on time and under budget. And I think we can do that as code officials. I think there's, I'm sorry to say it, but I think there's way too many, what I call obstructionist mm -hmm. building departments out there that appear mm -hmm. to do everything they can to stop people from doing their job and i sure. think our job is to do just the opposite and that's to help people understand why we're doing what we're doing educate them like, like i said and and get get to yes is what i like to tell people now that doesn't mean i prove everything you know i have no problem saying no we can't do that but in 40 years i tell people i probably haven't issued 40 stop work orders in my career um and i know people that issue that once a week um, so it's, it's, it's just in how you approach it. And I've been, uh, you know, it's just my way, my philosophy. I can, I, I seem to get a lot more done if I work with respect and, 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 you know, the common sense kind of thing to get, meet the intent of the code. So, yeah, um, that's always been my philosophy. Some people disagree and that's okay. You know, we all have different ways to do what we do. Well, it sounds no. like that philosophy's made you successful. Sorry, Pete. It's <laughs> worked pretty good. So, you, you know, one of the things that we always advocate, especially Rachel, she's a very customer service uh, minded person. You know, I always call her the Ned Flanders of code enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, she comes with this, uh, you know, she realizes that, hey, like, you know, these people, when when they're doing uh, work without construct, I mean, without permits, you know, a lot of times, yeah, the, they shouldn't be doing that, but at the same time, like, hey, they're they're just trying to make a you know earn an honest living and and doing what they're supposed to do. 
Yeah, and we say, hey, you know what? It needs to be inspected properly. It just needs, to, you know, you need to do the X, Y, and Z, and then you can move on with your project. And if it's not, if it's not in uh, something that you can build today, or you need a set of plans, or you need this, that needs, to, you know, you need to kind of conform with that. So, I mean, there's a there's a delivery method methodology to what we do, and and that sometimes gets lost because you know one of the things that I see a lot in in our industry is like, Hey, I'm the government and this is what I'm telling you. And, you know, a lot of times we forget like, Hey, these folks, they're just trying to provide, you know, they're trying to, you know, do a living for, you know, to put food on the table. Right. And, yeah. Yeah, so. Absolutely. and it, it's usually not the guys in the field that it's, it's responsible for getting the building permit. Right. Mm -hmm. The guys in the office or the ladies in the office that that are supposed to be doing that. Um, or the owner just said, no, we don't want to get a permit, get the work done. And so it's like, well, sorry, but we got to do it. You know, I'll, I'll work to get it done. We'll get you to act, you know, I'll let you work the rest of the day, but get me plans by, you know, three o'clock today. Yep. And I won't shut you down. Now, if you don't give me plans by three, I got to come back and, and put the stop work order on it. Yeah. But 90% of the time they're in the office way early. We're getting through the permit and get them going. Um, and, you know, it's it, that instead of that, piece of red paper creating a barrier between the inspector and the contractor. Right. Yeah. You know, and, 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 but then, you know, shout out to the code official. Cause sometimes, you know, these guys are like, I've been doing it for 20 years. I go in 20 years, you should have known that you need a permit. Yeah, <laughs> right. absolutely. And they know, I know they know, <laughs> but I, we, like I said earlier, you got to know how to play the game. You know, it's, it's okay. I know how to play the game now. I get people going, well, what have, you know, they're going to take advantage of you. And I go, yeah, they're going to try. But next time it's the same contractor. Now, wait a minute. We've been through this once before. I can't be a nice guy now. Yeah. I got to shut you down for the day. So it's, it's, it's all in how you deliver it and how you, you, you know, can I be a jerk? Absolutely. But I, I, like I said, I've been able to get a lot more done with the customer service route than the building police route. Right. Yeah. So. And th this is one of the things that we always discuss in code enforcement. You know, it's, it's a delivery of how you do things because if, like at the end of the day, if something needs a permit and we're like, Hey, you know what? I'll let you clean up that way. Your guys will get paid, but mm -hmm. at the end, but you need to do X, Y, Z, you know, or explain it to them because most people don't really, you know, yeah, uh, up until like, you know, my, and I always tell this story, like, you know, the, the way I discovered code enforcement is because uh, my parents caught a case back when my brother had a stroke and, uh, you know, he had a, we, we caught a code enforcement case and that's how I ended up learning about code enforcement. Before that, I'm like, I, I hadn't, I never even heard of code enforcement. And, you know, um, based on the interactions with the inspector, it was a combination inspector, code enforcement, building of a uh, building inspector. Mm -hmm. He was the nicest guy and he explained everything at that time I was in the military. So I'd have to communicate with him at like different time zones. You know, I was in Abu Dhabi at that time and, mm -hmm. and having to call him it's like, Hey, you know, cause my parents spoke limited English, but the delivery and the way he treated my parents, it, it really kind of made me realize, Hey, maybe the government isn't that bad. And so, you know, and, and, we can't always just be that jerk. I mean, yeah, we, we can go into, uh, you know, jerk mode and, you know, I, I know I've done it, but cause I had to, but you also have to explain the repercussions of like, Hey, if you don't do this, this is what may happen. I'm not saying it will happen, but it most likely will happen. And, you know, you give them options. And I think, you know, part of our customer service is giving those people the options because, you know, I've had, senior citizens tell me, Hey, I can't eat because you have a case on me. And that's like the worst thing. I can't imagine my parents, like, you know, my, my parents are older now saying, Hey, I can't eat because it's jerk at, at the city hall is, you know, making my life miserable. And that's not the intent of any code enforcement division. Right. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. we talked about that a lot offline too, about, you know, you bringing that level of humanity into your teaching and, and ultimately, um, again, that common sense. So absolutely, that makes perfect sense to utilize that. So 
Steve, um, in, in regards to uh, upcoming trainings, what I mean, I, I know we kind of touched about this, but Educode, you're doing uh, Educode, you're doing the Colorado Institute, anything else? I know you discussed maybe oh, Utah. Region, yeah, we'll have Region 3 coming up uh, next year, uh, Utah ABM in February. Um, yeah, the early early spring, and, and you know, is, is really the big teaching time for us. Um, and they, you've got code uh, development uh, hearings coming up in Louisville uh, for ICC. Encourage everybody to, to go to that. And, and that's probably the best education you can get on the codes is to attend a code hearing. Uh, if you can't go to the code hearing, you can watch it online for free. So uh, see how we make the, uh, uh, make the sausage. And so, uh, yeah, I, got <laughs> lots of, I do about 100 to 150 classes a year. Wow, that is some traveling. Yeah, that is traveling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, living out of the suitcase, you know. So, <laughs> absolutely. So one of the, one of the things that uh, we touch upon is like sometimes developing these courses. You know, when when do you? What's the methodology that you actually use? Because you're hard and hard. You're an educator. That's what you are. You know, and so how do you how do you come up with some of these courses and say you know. Like, how do you identify the needs out there? Do you, are you, are you just talking to all the different professionals and say, hey, cannabis is now the big thing or, you know, or whether it be like the shipping containers now becoming such a fad, like a touristy spot type of deal. So how do you come up with these uh, courses? A lot of it is new technology coming out, new ways. Um, sometimes it's somebody calls and said, hey, can you do a class on this? Or, you know, we'll just brainstorm some ideas. Um, you know, I, you know, and sometimes they say, well, we need a really basic class, right? I'm doing, uh, I'm going to be doing a class for, um, uh, region three in July. I think it is that, um, they want it to be a very basic building inspector class. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a preparation class for taking the ICC building inspector B1 test. So we'll get into how is a test put together, you know, how are, you know, how to take a test, how to study, uh, and then we'll get into the code and look at different ways that the code would ask questions and or the test would ask questions and those kind of things. So a lot of it is just from people saying, you know, what do you think about this? Can you do this kind of class? Um, Cause I've written so many, it's like, I'm, I'm running out of ideas, so I'm taking ideas from anybody that has them out there. So, you know what, Steve? Sometimes we say we have to return to basics, you know, mm -hmm. just even how to introduce yourself to the general public. And, you know, um, uh, Rachel taught a course at the Women Leader Symposium on uh, co uh, code enforcement connectivity, you know, on how to just basically be like a good human being when you're talking to your, 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 your folks. Because at the end of the day, we have to be community partners. I mean, that's that's the end of the goal, because, you know, a neighborhood is, you know, just as you can't treat them individually, you have to treat them as a neighborhood. And you know what? It's for the betterment of the entire community. So, Rachel, you can touch on that one. <laughs> you know, and that's I think, again, where I get so excited to bring people like Mr. Thomas on because they have that mindset and that mentality. Um, it, it warms your heart to know that you know, you they deliver the same message out there, um, you know, connecting with an individual, treating them with respect, leaving them with their dignity intact because it's a code violation for Jiminy's sake, or it's a building violation that we have the knowledge to provide them to correct it, to make it better. Um, so why would you take that information and make it a negative thing? It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, positive thing and you can make magic with it. And I know I'm silly when I say that, but and that's why I'm drawn to people like Steve, because he does have that human element and, you know, ultimately um, delivers it in everything that he does, even down to, you know, the name of the company that he works for. And I don't know if we touched on this while my um, <laughs> phone was having technical difficulties or not. Um, but Steve, can you touch a little bit about, you know, Shum's Coda and what that is and kind of going off of this conversation and showing that it embodies everything that you do again not only in your teaching um but in the company you work for you have you you are a part of and so on and so forth 
Yeah. So a lot of people ask, you know, what is what is the name Shum's Coda mean? Um, and uh, we actually had that uh, on our website. And basically, Shum's uh, is a noun that means sun, light, brilliance, or knowledge. Um, so that kind of goes with you know the knowing the codes uh, and, and and those kind of things. And then coda uh, is the final section of a musical piece, so a final section that adds dramatic energy to the work as a whole, usually through intensified rhythmic uh, activity and extra text. So we kind of look at providing services from the very beginning uh, to the end of a project and and what are we doing and provide that guidance that people need uh, to know um, the code and, and, and use the code. You know, I, I, I would probably work with more architects now uh, as a consultant on code issues than I do doing actual plan reviews for jurisdictions. I do both, and I, but I, I probably spent more time helping architects get their plans put together. And, and once again, I look at that as educating them and getting them, you know, to understand the code and how to use the code uh, and those kind of things. Yeah, and what I see is is essentially bright positivity. So in the beginning, you know, Shums and Coda, that's what I hear and what I see is, is again, that um, understanding education, information, um, but it's bright and it's positive. So... Yeah. My point with all that is you bring everything full circle, Mr. Thomas, you know, whether you're teaching, uh, whether you're just a regular everyday man sitting in a Colorado ICC chapter meeting, whatever it is, you bring that positivity and that light to um, everything that you do on top of that knowledge. And I'm, I'm in awe of you. I just love you to pieces in, in the sense of, um, you know, you are definitely one amazing individual. So thank you for continuing to deliver that, you know, part of delivering that you talked about really connecting with every key player, right? So you talked about connecting with the folks on the city side, whether it be your, your fire, your police, your public works, um, but also that connection between your contractors, your architects. So kind of talk a little bit to that, um, how those connections and how those resources help you deliver and continue to deliver the positive knowledge that you guys do. So when I was a building official in Glendale, Colorado, I, I got involved in the community. Uh, it's a very small jurisdiction, two thirds of a square mile, population of 4,000. Um, and but we had high rise construction. So if you imagine 4,000 people in two thirds of a square mile, that's a pretty dense spot. We had 47 liquor licenses. And I served as the building official, planning director, zoning administrator, code enforcement, um, supervised the janitorial crew, the whole bit. So I wore a lot of hats. And in such small jurisdiction, it was easy to get involved with the community. So I would go to business association meetings. Um, I knew every building owner in the city. I knew pretty much every employee at the city. And so it helped me educate people on why do we have codes? Why, why do I have to get a building permit? And I didn't go to the community meetings, the, the business association meetings to make presentations. I just went and attended and was there to answer questions. And, and when you have, you know, that interaction that's not across the counter, it's a lot easier to get the message across as to why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, and it's not that adversarial, why do I need a building permit? It's what, oh, you know, Steve, I'm thinking about doing this in our building. What do you think? And it's like, well, you got to do this and this and this. And so um, it, it really helped me. And I try to do that in the jurisdictions that we work in. And then, of course, you know, the education's really helped me to, to get um, the architectural clients um, to help them understand how to how to use the code for their project. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like Cece Muela says, you take little nuggets from everywhere you go, right? That's that helped you provide the best level of service that you possibly can. That's yeah. important. That connection is important. Like like Pete said, you know, with the class that I taught at the Women Leaders and Symposium, it's it's really understanding people. Um, you don't have to understand the who's, the what's, the where's, the wins, and sometimes the why, or excuse me, but you do want to know the why's. You know, how can you help them? Um, so thank you for that. Yep. Thank you. You know, and uh, Steve, I can really appreciate, you know, we're, we're, we're all like it. We're all like a small community. I mean, we have, we, we have different, 
folks coming on this show because at the end of the day, we want to promote uh, a built environment, a healthy built environment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, building and safety, I think to me, it's so important that we get this message out there. Education is important. Educating the public is important. You know, being part of your community, you know, you don't get to where we get to uh, by just kind of standing in the sidelines. You know, you have to get in there. You have to talk to your community. You have to be engaged. You have to be involved. And that's an important element for any any um, any individual that really wants to up their game, because at the end of the day, you know what? If if you're not contributing to your community, I mean, you're just kind of you're just there, mm-hmm. just doing your job. Yeah. No. You know, I mean, build. You know, building your your your. You know, building that village. It's, you know, a lot of times you're connecting people with different people, and you're like, hey, you know what? Um, I don't teach a cannabis class, but guess what? I know somebody that teaches a cannabis class. Or, you know, you're, you might say, hey, I'm not a, your code guy, but hey, Rachel's your code person over here. So, you know, so, I mean, it, it's, I, I love this, like, um, small community of professionals that we've created. You know, we, I see you at EduCode or, or, or this, this event or that event. And it's always exciting to, you know, be able to just meet new people and, you know, get to kind of showcase their con- contributions to our industry. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Thank you. I love so, so where do you see yourself? You know, I, I get excited to think about, you know, where you're going to go with your career, but I know Pete mentioned, and I know this about you, you're a lifelong educator. Um, where do you see that, that going? Do you ever see yourself running for a board position within ICC at the, the director level or, or where do you see that going? Ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Um, although, you know, many, many years ago, I thought about running for ICBO or board or something like that. Um, I, I don't know. I just think, number one, it, it takes a huge, huge amount of time and commitment to be on the board at mm-hmm. ICC. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I am so busy doing what I'm doing. I, I want to make sure I can do that. And I, Honestly, I think I can do more good for the organization doing what I'm doing, promoting the codes, promoting ICC, than if I were on the board. Um, you know, and the board's really changed. Um, it's it's no longer, you know, they got a business to run. It's a huge corporation now, and so um, that that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, at that point, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do we need to draft Steve for ICC director committee, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, Steve, I can respect that because, you know, I think I'm just selfish in the sense of we want you pretty much everywhere in every avenue, uh, to provide your vast amount of knowledge. So I think I'm just a little selfish in that sense, but I totally respect, um, where you're at and where you want to be and, where you want to stay. So um, thank you for all your teachings and everything that you do too. The last class I got to uh, attend of yours was one of the shipping container classes. And, you know, we talked a lot about uh, bringing that level of humanity and you have so many jokes and you're just fun when you teach. And this industry needs that. You know, we have some really great um, preferred providers out there, some really great folks within ICC even um, that, that provide this information. But you, you take the cake. You provide it in a level which is understandable um, from that common sense um, aspect. And keep doing it. Just keep doing it. I'll try. I, I have a new term. I call it edutainment. Okay. Yeah. You, you educate right. while entertaining. And so I, I'm one of those that I got to have fun, right? I got to have fun doing what I'm doing. If I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, I shouldn't be doing it. So I, I really enjoy, you know, telling stories and those kind of things. And that helps people relax a little bit. It helps them understand the basis of what we're talking about and, and those kind of things. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Steve, one of the reasons why we bring folks on, on onto this show is because, you know what, we want to get to know a little bit more about you, what, you, what you've what you been up to, how you got here, uh, you know, where you're going. We, we love that because, you know what, everybody that comes on here, we get to learn a little bit about them and their contributions. And it, it just continues to, we just love just bringing folks out here and giving us the information. I mean, you know, like, I didn't know, like, I, I totally forgot you were a cannabis guy. Yeah. <laughs> totally forgot. <laughs> 
yeah. and I remember like well, you know, you know my... that, you know, just not the cannabis guy, the cannabis <laughs> code guy. You're the code cannabis guy, code guy. No, yeah. but you get what I'm saying. So, you know, I remember um I I, I did a I did a ace um I was at an ace uh, conference in uh in Colorado. I think you were holding that um uh, um a cannabis uh, cannabis a couple years back. I pretty well attended because I know some California folks went over there and then they ended up at the ACE. They crashed the ACE meeting to come find out. Yeah. Oops, we lost him. Okay, I'm glad you heard that too. Yeah. He sounds like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> you lost it there, Pete. <laughs> It's something on the, uh, let's be his internet. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. That's better. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. So, you know, again, it's, it's always a, it's always a pleasure to meet people that have a wealth of knowledge, you know, the cannabis industry. And, you know, I, w down the road, we'll probably talk about cannabis, another topic that, you know, it's, well, it's not dear, near and dear my heart, but it's a, it's an interesting topic that, you know, a lot of us, uh, in code enforcement have to, um, have to address and we, when we talked about the honey oil earlier uh yeah. you know um the the uh black market operations you know you in california you have these big farms you know these cartel run things so there's a, a level of element that goes into you know aside what would you say with the building the building stuff there's also the code enforcement stuff so and yeah. you know we, we 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 need to talk about that down the road so i'd love to yeah it's it's definitely an issue for the code enforcement uh community because you got people doing these illegal grows whether it's outside or indoors and uh potential of, of some pretty serious injuries to folks and uh those kind of things so i i, I talk a little bit about it in in my full day class on applying the codes to cannabis and you know the fact you know i always ask people i say does anybody own a own a home that you rent out to people and there's usually one or two people and i go okay how much she charge for rent? And they go, oh, I don't know, thousand bucks or whatever, twelve hundred. I'm not in California, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, they go about twelve hundred bucks a month. And I said, tell you what, I'll give you five thousand dollars cash per month to rent your house out. Will you take it? And they always say yes. And I go, um, okay, great. I'm going to go in, take all the walls out. I'm going to disconnect the vents off the water heater and the furnace. I'm going to grow plants and you and water hand water all my plants. I'm going to drench your floors. You're going to get mold, mildew. And then when I get my get busted, guess what? Insurance isn't going to cover the cost of uh, repairing your house. And they go, Oh, people don't think about that. And right. so, yeah, it's, it's a huge problem, not only for the, the code enforcement folks, but the homeowners that are getting mm -hmm. ripped off by these folks. Well, you could always add on the utility theft of electricity right. and water. You yeah. know, that, that's always interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stealing electricity from the neighbor, absolutely. Yeah. So, right. it, interesting topic. So, we did have Jennifer Morris, who runs a great task force out of Riverside County. So, she's a multi-agency. Uh, she she does a – it's a pretty good program. So, that's that's another a code enforcement component. But learning the building side – why it be, why it's dangerous it's it's another component that we need to kind of explore so yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome yeah. being able to have that knowledge to provide the homeowner you know again providing it in a common sense fashion where they truly understand how it affects them because everybody's bottom line is themselves right typically you know yeah. how is it going to affect them yeah. you know what are the repercussions what's the money you know going to be involved all that kind of stuff yeah yeah. So did you two talk a little bit while I was offline about your book and um, that kind of stuff? Oh, okay. Bummer. I'm sorry. I missed that. Okay. Right. Yep. But that's yeah. okay. You can mention it again because the 2020 version or 2021 version, it just came out. So okay. uh, available at ICC. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, you know, so just um, if you if you guys take a opportunity to take one of Steve's classes, please do. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's always, uh, they're always good classes. Um, I know, I know region three, you're, you'll be at region three in EduCode in June. Let me see what, and what I know Thank September, you. October is always busy for code enforcement. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. 
Yeah, absolutely. The, um, I know I had a couple of things written down here. I'm just trying to make sure I don't talk about topics multiple times for being offline. So I apologize. Bear with me. Um, so, you know, as far as what you do, Steve, you know, what, other than the education, what brings you the most passion? You know, we have our our code lives, we have our personal lives, but what really continues you to drive um, this education train? Mm, that's a great question. Um, well, like I said before, I think everything I do, I, I consider education. Whether I'm doing a class, whether I'm doing a plan review, whether I'm helping an architect figure out how to use the code on their project, I look at that all as education. I think I think I, I think all code uh, folks has, have to look at their job is to educate. We are the code experts, right? And people say, well, the architects are supposed to know the code. Well, they don't get any code education in, in college. They get their education on the codes from our plan reviews and contractors get their education from our inspections. So if we don't do a good plan review and we don't do a good inspection, we're going to get crappy buildings. And so it's, I, I look at everything we do. So I, you know, my passion is probably education because I just love teaching, but I also enjoy sitting down and looking at a set of drawings and going, okay, the architect and the owner want to do this. How can we use the code to do what they want to do and help them get their building design so that they can, you know, have the project that they want. Um, so that's probably the two things I I really enjoy doing the most um, is is the teaching and, and helping people get projects built that are safe. Because you know, that's ultimately what we're here for is make sure people are safe in their buildings. And you know, people don't go walking into a building and go, oh, did this building comply with the code? They don't think about that. <laughs> And so that's our job to make sure that it does and, and that, that they can live their lives and, and without any hazards. You know, you know what, Steve, it kind of draws me back to when it, when it comes to education. You know, when you're born, you're not just a good roofer or a good painter or, you know, a good mechanic. You kind of have to continue to learn and build your craft. And, you know, this is one thing that, that, that we're always advocating is, you know what, we got to get good at our craft. You know, right. by doing those building inspections, and sometimes um, there's, you know, you get to experience some folks that, you know, they barely get um, education, you know, because of budgeting issues, and, you know, but Zoom kind of helped out with that a little bit. But it, it's not the same as being live because you you just get that network and you get these stories and you know and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I think it's important for folks to really hone in on um, the importance of just using the knowledge that you're learning in the classes and applying it over and over and over because you know there's there's times like i i, I have a college degree i could tell you honestly i probably remember 10 percent of my the class that i took if that you know but you know when when i go to educodes or things like that we try to make it where people can take something home and apply just a little nugget of of information, just like Cecilia says and Rachel says, you know, and apply it on a daily basis and you get good at it. And eventually you get to teach this stuff. You know, you, you don't become the uh, expert uh, building inspector trainer by not doing these inspections over and over and over where you can say, hey, you know, this is a new trend. This is happening or this is, you know, because, you know, you, you said you started about 40 years ago, you know, 40 years ago, 3D printing wasn't even on your mind. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. So you know, it, it's one of those things where now you're what you're, you know, different environmental factors are you know now rising up to the forefront. You know more, you know, like in back in '96 when you you would have thought like, hey, I'm gonna put an electric charging station at my home for my vehicle. You know, people don't think about these kind of things. So, nope. So, absolutely right. Technology changes every day. New yeah. Stuff coming out every day. Yeah, and it really seems like you adapt with that, you know, knowing you talked a little bit about those those inspectors or those code officials that kind of have that tunnel vision or um, that old mentality and, and keeping current with the codes, keeping current with, you know, new generations, um, you know, the differences, anything out there, cultural, whatever you want to call it, that is ultimately going to create a different 
um, understanding, I guess. Um, but you continue to adapt with that. And I think more than anything, um, you know, before we end here, you know, I'm very appreciative of that level of communication that you provide um, and being able to understand that the world is forever changing. Therefore, we have to be forever changing. Um, I think that's really important. And I think that you embody that too. So that's, that's super awesome that you're not, you know, one of those ones that's stuck in your ways, you know, but I do have to ask, because I know my family gets irritated. I know Pete's family probably has some comments too, but are you one of those ones that walks into a building and has violation eyes? Absolutely. <laughs> you probably didn't hear my wife next door just say, uh-huh, uh-huh. So yeah, uh, you know, it, it's a disease I call it. In fact, you know, I, I, you ask her, I've been known to, when we go into a restaurant, when we sit down at the table, I go, okay, if something happens, we're going out that exit right there. Um, so, <laughs> You know, it's just, it's, it's a disease, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't get invited to uh, a lot of birthday parties because of my eyes. <laughs> you know, I got four of them too. I'm not invited to those either. Yeah. Good point. So violation eyes. Yep. Yeah. I, I like that. Your four eyes, Pete, that made yeah. me, yeah, that, that was funny. <laughs> I see twice the violations. That's right. So. Four times, four times. Well, good. It's been such an absolute pleasure talking with you today, Mr. Steve Thomas. Um, you are such an industry uh, professional who brings so much to everything that you do. And I, again, am just grateful. Um, I know Pete is grateful having you on the show today as well. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with uh, before we sign off and say adios for the weekend? I don't think so. I had a great time. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, appreciate everybody uh, tuning in and listening to what we got to say. Yeah, thanks for some of the great comments. I only got to see a few. Miss Barber, um, Ben Bredmore, of course. You know, Steve yeah. Thomas is a legend. I saw David Spencer on there. You know, thank you to everybody who joins us. Um, all the information that we provide is meant to um, truly be at our level, at a level that we can all understand um, information that's, you know, palatable. We'll put it that way, as Pete said. So thank you very much for being on here with us today. I look forward to the next time that we are in each other's presence. Well, that, that'll be next week. So that's right. That Come chapter nice meeting. Meeting. <laughs> oh, say that again. That be next week at a chapter meeting. Yes, indeed. I look forward to it. We'll be there. All right. Great. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Code Concepts with Rachel Patterson, Pete Roque, and our special guest, Mr. Steve Thomas. Everyone have a beautiful weekend. Bye.